Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Joanna Rousseau, and I would like okay, to explain you um, what I did during my study, so entitled Subjective Contrast Sensitivity Function Assessment in Stereoscopic of Gamma Pages. But first of all, please let me um, introduce you and gi or give you more insights about the context of the study. So, um, as uh, it was mentioned, I'm working on medical displays. So, this study was intended for medical applications. So, what you should know is medical displays, and especially diagnostic displays, so for radiologists, needs to be calibrated. And why do they need to be calibrated? They need to be calibrated to ensure that whatever the device a radiologist, or whatever the display the radiologist is using, we still have the same image representation. So wherever he is on the, in the hospital or wherever he is in the world at another hospital using a diagnostic display, always the same image representation he should get. So how can we ensure a consistent image representation? It's done by standardizing the displayed luminance to the luminance perceived by the eyes. And this is handled by accounting for the sensitivity of the human eye to changes in contrast. And this is also denoted at the CSF when we display a luminance. So the CSF, the CSF stands for contrast sensitivity function. It's the human eye ability to detect a low contrast pattern stimulus and it depends on the spatial frequency of that pattern. The contrast sensitivity function has been intensively studied since the 60s, and it has even been modeled in the 90s, late 90s, by Barton. But the contrast sensitivity function has always been studied under two visualization conditions only. And despite medical practice is progressively moving from 2D to 3D formats, no studies or almost none studies have been performed to try to assess the contrast sensitivity function under 3D visualization conditions, so when looking at 3D images. So the objective of our study, I think as you can imagine, was to assess the 3D CSF. So would the CSF be different if we have a 3D display. If we look at a 3D display and 3D images, would the CSF be altered? Uh, we also wondered, OK, if we use a 3D display but under 2D visualization conditions, so as a normal 2D display, does the CSF still hold? That's also one of our questions during the study. And so we studied so the CSF because we wanted to know if the calibration algorithms should be revised for medical displays. So methods and materials for this study. As equipment for our experiments, we use Barco 24-inch full HD display. It comprised a pattern retarder, so especially multiplexing the right and the left view. Um, OK, here is the stimuli we used. It's called a Gabor patch. It's a vertically, 2D vertically oriented Gabor patch. That's the C stimuli that we used during all the experiments. So the Gabor patch is just, in fact, the multiplication of a 2D cosine pattern with a dedicated frequency f and a dedicated contrast c in the formula. So you can see just here. And it's multiplied by a Gaussian, a 2D Gaussian. So, OK, for experiments, we had also to add a few, function, a few additional constants, like A to account for the viewing distance and the pixel pitch, because when we assess the CSF, we take care of having the proper visual angle. So as it's, it's in terms of visual degree, visual angle, we need to properly calibrate everything in terms of viewing distance, pixel pitch, and so on to get the proper number. And also, you have a few uh, constants, like the offset or the scaling that were used, in fact, to get digital driving levels. So instead of having numbers between 0 and 1, having numbers between 0 and 255 that are required for the display. Um, OK. No, sorry. Yeah. So during these experiments, a few parameters were changed. So first, the contrast. 
So, okay, because with the CSF, to assess the CSF, the control sensitivity function, we need to uh, find the contrast threshold, so the contrast at which the detector can't see or can barely see the stimulus or just can't see the stimulus anymore. So, of course, we had to change the contrast to find this contrast threshold. Also, the spatial frequency, because as I mentioned, the contrast sensitivity function depends on the spatial frequency, but also to have three, what we call 3D visualization conditions, we altered the depth plane position, so the plane where the 2D GABOR patch was lying, and also we add some 3D inclination. So, to explain it a bit more, so you have a GABOR patch, however, our GABOR patch was lying at the display plane, so that's what we call 2D visualization condition, or we let's say, moved our GABA patch further from the observer. So a kind of translation along the z-axis to, to have it lying at a depth plane, virtual depth or virtual plane, that is behind the display plane. And then for the 3D inclination, what we did is just that we did a with no uh, rotation around so the x-axis, around this axis, to create this 3D inclination. The 3D inclination was also only performed when we had a depth plane different from the display plane to ensure that the whole image was always behind the display plane. So we studied, we performed all the experiments for seven different special frequencies, ranging from 0 0.4 cycles per degree to 10 cycles per degree. Okay, to the orientation, just to say that, okay, we studied a vertical GABOR patch, vertically oriented GABOR patch, no any or 2D orientation of a GABOR patch, two 3D inclinations, so either zero degree or 45 degree, and two the plane, either zero being the display plane, or 171 millimeter behind the display plane. So in fact, we have three, what we call configurations. So to assess the 2D CSF, it means that you have a depth plane of zero to an inclination of zero. For a 3D CSF, you have a depth plane different from the display plane and a 3D inclination of zero, but we also so studied an over 3D inclination. So for the subjective experiments, we used nine non-expert observers. They were all tested for their vision and for their stereoacuity. We used a controlled environment to ensure that we had uniform psychophysical conditions over all the tests. And we also, so to find the contrast threshold, we used a three done one up staircase experiment. So the staircase, it consists into either decreasing or increasing the contrast of the displayed stimulus, depending on the response of the observer to the preceding stimulus. So if, the, stimu if the, the observer said, yes, I see the stimulus, then we decrease the contrast by a certain step down. And if he says, no, I do not see the stimulus, then we increased the contrast by a certain step up. Three done, uh, one up, it stands for the fact that uh, after the first reversal was reached, so the reversal is a change in the direction of the contrast. Um, so after the first reversal is reached, um, three yes answers, so yes, three times the answer, the observer had to answer three times, yes, I see the stimulus, to have a decrease in the contrast, while only a no answer was required to increase the contrast again. And so after we performed the staircase for 22 reversals, until 22 reversals are reached, and then we used the 20 last reversals to make, so we took the mean and we determined the contrast threshold. And then you have to know that the contrast sensitivity is the inverse of contrast threshold. Okay, there were a little bit more calculation behind that that you can find in the paper, but in general, that's um, how it's working. So for to analyze then all our data, so first we check if it was normally distributed and it was not. So instead of this far, calculating and displaying uh, means, we decided to go for medians and first and fourth quartiles, and to go so for non-parametric significance testing. Like, for example, the Friedman test, compare medians of different configurations for different fragrances, but also the one sample Wilkinson sign rank test to compare, in fact, medians we, um, the medians we measured for the 2D CSF to medians to values returned 
by Barton's model. So, main results and conclusions for our study. Uh, when comparing uh, our three of, when using our 3D display as a 2D visualization device, so a depth plane of zero, so the display plane, 3D inclination of zero, we wanted to know if we were still um, in agreement with Barton's model. So, as you can see on this plot, but also in the results of the significance test, so one sample with Coxon sign wrong test, you can see that the null hypothesis is never rejected. So it would mean that there's no statistical significance proven between our measured medians and uh, the value written by Barton. So what we drew as conclusion that, OK, apparently, according to this result, the 2D CSF still holds, holds for 3D monitor when used as a 2D visualization device. Then, this was, let's say, the more uh, important part. It was to know if the 2D CSF differ, differs or not to the 3D, from the 3D CSF. So, 3D CSF, I remember you, it was when the depth plane behind the display plane only was considered. No 3D inclination yet. So what we, as you can notice, okay, on the plot, it seems that at low frequency, there's a decrease in terms of contrast sensitivity, but a, sm a small increase at high frequencies. I remember that I plot the median first and third quartiles. And OK, the significant test testing, so comparing the medians for the 2D CSF to the medians measured for the 3D CSF, we see that at low frequencies and high frequencies, so below one cycle, till one cycle per degree and at 10 cycle per degree, the null hypothesis is rejected. So apparently, there would be statistical difference between the 2D and the 3D CSF at these frequencies. So, yeah, as you can notice. So, OK, our results suggest that the 3D CSF would differ from the 2D CSF. Now, let's compare. Um, so here we are still, we are in the 3D uh, condition, visualization conditions, but now let's add some 3D inclination. So instead of having no 3D inclination, now we have a 45 degree 3D inclination. Okay, uh, if you look at the medians, it's, we have the impression that there would be a decrease in sensitivity due to, um, no, it would be an increase in sensitivity thanks to the, ad the added 3D inclination, but in fact, uh, that was not confirmed by significance testing. And later, we also did another study with a 60 degree inclination. And OK, maybe it was due to the observers. So we did that 60 degree inclination with new observers. And we didn't have this tendency at all. And also, the null hypothesis was also rejected for all the frequencies. So apparently, when adding a 3D inclination, we don't have additional impact on the 3D CSF. So as conclusion, what we got from our study was that, OK, apparently, the 2D CSF still holds for 2D monitor used as a 2D monitor. But it seems that the 3D CSF differs from the 2D CSF. So if the 3D CSF differs from the 2D CSF, this means that maybe we should consider um, revising our calibration algorithm for 3D medical displays. But when displaying a 3D image, we, will, we can't calibrate it the same way when we had only 2D images. But OK, further studies are being performed on this topic to know exactly how it should be, uh, how this should be altered and also run this experience with more observers. But these were the first results we obtained. Um, OK, I would like to thank for that talk um, IWT, who supported so this project in the context of background grant named called Optical Simulation, Modeling, and Evaluation of 3 Medical Displays. And of course, to give special thanks to all the observers who took part in the experiments. I thank you. And if you want to see the stimulus, also the staircase, and how it was built, and also so to, to see this depth plane, these three inclinations, we, have a, the, we will be at the demo session. So this afternoon, for this evening, and with all the equipment, OK, except the control room, but we will have uh, the, all the software, the equipment. So if you want to have a look at this study, you are all invited to come and
try it yourself, being the observer yourself. Thank you.